Welcome. Welcome to our very first season, very first show of Life on Track. I'm so excited. This is all about getting on the track you were born into this world to be on. It's about getting into the driver's seat of your own life personally and professionally. I'd love to introduce myself and the show. I'm Erin Lay. I'm your host. And the reason why I put the show together is to bring love into the world. When the pandemic started, I thought, you know, what can I do? What, what is my part here? What part can I play to, to bring love into the world? And, uh, and what's the creative opportunity here? And what I, I love to do and, and love to stress is it's all about being solution oriented, right? When we go into worry and fear, lack and scarcity, that'll never serve us. But when we're in faith and we are just, you know, coming from a place of, of, of solution and, uh, and creating, you know, what's, what's best, it's a beautiful, beautiful place to be. So this this is how everything started two years ago, really quick. I decided I'm going to write a book and it's Work Love. And this is about bringing love into the workplace because so many employers and so many employees felt displaced and disheveled and, you know, disrespected. And so I wrote the book Work Love. And, and again, it's about bringing the philosophy of love into the workplace, which just increases productivity, the net bottom line and the health of, of everybody involved. So that was that was the book, and then I decided to do a summit on that. So we did seasons one and season two of the uh, of the Life on Track Summit, where I interviewed over sixty experts in the realm of personal and professional development, and that led us to where I where I am here today with you. And I'm so excited for this TV show, and now it's going to air on at all of the online streaming TV, like Apple TV and uh, Amazon and and uh, Roku and all of that, and also a podcast through Spotify and all the big podcasts. So really, really, really excited to be here with you. And you can also download all of the TV shows. You can go to lifeontrack.tv, lifeontrack.tv, and download all the shows that have played. If you missed one, if you want your family and friends to see it, and if you want to learn more about the shows that are coming up, you can go there as well, lifeontrack.tv. You could also download a free copy of my book, Work Love There. Also, so let's get right into this. I'm so excited for the first show and it's on Valentine's Day. Perfect for love. Perfect for love. And I have the perfect guest to bring on, Renee Piani. I'm so excited Hi. to introduce you. And I'm going to read your bio because I don't want to leave anything out. I love you. Love you. <laughs> it's all about love. I love this. And look at how beautiful you look. Look at how beautiful she looks at Valentine's Day. We have our red on. <laughs> You look gorgeous. Um, I, I'm all I'm all about love. And when I when I met you, it was like this is a perfect match. So this is a match of uh visions. So we're here to inspire all of you today about love, whether you're, you're in a situation or not, there's lots to learn. Absolutely. And it really is the answer to everything. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you're not in a relationship, when you love yourself fully. You know, when you could bring love to the world, you know, like the whole reciprocity thing goes, it's just so exciting. Let me introduce, let me just read your bio so everybody knows who you are. And I can't wait to get into this interview. So Renee is known as the love designer, right? You can see right there, the love designer. She is a pioneer in the love industry, an award-winning international love designer, heart-centered messenger and coach, relationship reinvention expert and role model for modern love. Renee is creating extraordinary love stories. She's a speaker, TV and radio personality, TEDx youth presenter, community connector, and author of Get Real About Love, The Secrets to Opening Your Heart and Finding True Love, as well as her other book, Love Mechanics. So welcome. Welcome, Renee. Hi. Hi. I'm, so, I'm so thrilled to be here. It's such an important time in this world for more love. So Let's let's offer all of your people all that they need to stay inspired during this challenging time in the world, you know? Yes, and keep smiling. Yeah. And keep smiling. So I ask every every expert, every guest that for years the same question when I first bring them on. And it's all about the how and why. You know, like how did you get into doing what you're doing and why? I love finding out the purpose behind why people, what makes you tick? Well, I was brought up in an Italian family on the East Coast, and I was a wedding planner originally. And when I moved to Los Angeles in 1988, I saw the loneliness here. And because I was a big community connector back East, I decided to do that here. And that built, it, uh, it started to be sort of like networking, but then I was matching people. And I got asked to teach at a, at a school called the Learning Annex. It was here in Los Angeles and in New York. 
and I got asked to do makeovers on men in a class for a 15 minute segment. And when I got into that room for all the women around the world, the men in that room were so open hearted and raw with me uh, that I turned it into becoming one of the very first love coaches in America back in 1992 for men. And that was when I realized that men did not have the same Prince training that women do. And that's why this is an important interview. Mm. because Valentine's Day, you know, it's not like guys have a Valentine's Day guide to showing your woman <laughs> everything or even how to prepare for love like we do because we have each other to talk to. So that started, this was my first book called Love Mechanics and I used a power tool on the front, right? And that turned into television and media and then I pioneered the first speed dating company because I and I put thousands of people together. It was called Rapid Dating and I just was on fire because love is the most important choice of your life. And if you've chosen unwisely and you're back in the game, I help people to reinvent. So I just expanded and expanded and speak all over the country about what you just wrote about, the balancing of life and work and business. And I'm also married and been with my husband who you just met. For the last, we've been together 20 years and married for 15. So now I'm doing a lot of work with married people on how to keep it spicy and alive. And for people, you know, that are reinventing to get back in the game. I confidence. love it. I love it. And that's the key, right? The confidence. Mm -hmm. Because when I'm divorced and I got divorced a few years ago. Mm -hmm. So with those first few years after being married, I was with my ex-husband for 22 years. And it takes, a, it takes time to get to know yourself again, yeah, you know, and I didn't even know how to behave when I was going out. And I was like, what do I do? You know, <laughs> how do I talk to these guys? And it took a couple of years, but when you get really comfortable in your own skin, mm -hmm. it gets to be fun. Yeah. You know, life gets to be fun. And anyway, so let's, let's get into your, how do you make Valentine's because today's Valentine's day. How can you create a magnificent Valentine's day? You know, whether you're single, married, divorced, at work, you know, how can you create that? Well, I even have an article about it on my blogs about creating a Valentine's Day, even though you may not be with somebody. When I was single, and if you are single, I gathered friends. I got men and women together. We would have a dinner. They'd bring a single friend, and we all brought gifts. So we got to, ex and we talked about our vision of what we wanted in the future. So we weren't sad. We, or I would have girls come over and we'd have cocktails, watch Sex in the City. Now the new Sex in the City is out. So we would watch Sex in the City and then talk about our vision. So as Valentine, as a, a person that loves love, I, you know, as married woman, I like to do more intimate things at home. I don't like to go out. I like to create a romantic environment in my bedroom. And we have these special rituals of massage and all that kind of stuff. But more importantly, just really, um, we, we talk about our relationship and we do our vows um, every year as well as a couple. I get married every year to my husband yeah, yeah. Um, because I want to commit to the commitment. And um, with couples, this, this is actually something that is a great gift to give, uh, whether you're single or not, to yourself, to a friend, or you can all buy hearts and give each other love. So it's, it's about being the love that you want to attract, whether you're single or you're not. And also, even in marriage, I think people get a little stale, you know, after so many years of like the men go by the dead roses the last day. So hopefully you've planned ahead. You've planned ahead and women like a man with a plan. So if you're a man watching this, we really appreciate when you go the extra mile of doing it before, you know, something. It doesn't have to be anything expensive, even just a thoughtful card. But for people that are looking, it's a great time to reflect on your vision for love this year if you don't have love in your life. And that's where, of course, my book comes in because it makes you look at where you are, the phases, because everybody's in a phase of love, whether you're married or single. So only you can shift that phase by being honest with your heart. So I advise you when you're having trouble with your own heart or even with your mate, when I get disconnected from my husband, I lay the heart down on his desk. And that means instead of we need to talk, 
That means let's have a heart to heart. So mm -hmm. it's about creating rituals for yourself, whether you're married or single, to make sure that you're going out and doing actions that are going to lead you there and to stay away from people that are not happy with love at this time. If you have a, you know, a bunch of friends that are depressed, it might be time for you to back off so that you keep your heart open. You have to look and see yeah. what level, like I always say, how much of your heart is open? So, you know, that's a good question to ask yourself today on Valentine's day. If you've had a disappointment, you know, or you're not really <laughs> sure you got to stay open because there's always new people to meet and people get really sad and you can't let yourself get sad. It's time to work on your own heart today. If you don't have someone. I love what you just said, first of all, about asking how open is my heart? Like really just being honest and true with yourself, you yeah. know, is it guarded? You know, are you, mm -hmm. are you open? And, uh, and I love what you're saying with your husband, you do the heart to heart, you know, you're saying we need to communicate in yeah. a healthy way, as opposed to, like you said, we need to talk or I don't like this and finger pointing. And, you know, we need to talk. Here's, here's my heart. You know, I want to share my heart with you. Like, that's yeah. vulnerable and that's powerful. You know, yeah. for both the men and the women to be able to do that. I love this. Well, you so, know, as a busy woman, your book was about work life, right? So I go out and speak nationwide about the art of balancing love, life, family, and business because you're juggling everything. And when I go out and speak, you know, sometimes I'm out at a conference and then you get tied up with the people and then you go out for drinks and call him I'm like, oh, and then you're working all day. How can you switch? This is very important. How do you switch from that brain, right? The work, go, go, go. And my husband works a lot too. And we make a concerted effort to switch gears. And that means that I come up, I take off my wardrobe of that day and I go to the shower and shower off the day so that I can go back to be a different me for us or friends, even with friends, you know, I have to switch my gears. Don't you like this? Yeah. Is, this is a big deal. You're doing a TV show You're putting <laughs> all over the world. When you do that, I do that too. I do a lot of interviews and I'm always like amped up. And then I got to switch back into cooking and yep. being romantic and all of those things. And sometimes women go, oh, I've done that for years. But if you're married, he's he or she is the only person that you're getting love from. So, you know, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about sexually and romantically if you're not giving those things to your husband or wife, who is and why are they how are they going to be happy if that's not happening? And it's really important for you to see how romantic or really are you being? Because if you want love, you got to be able to give what you want to receive. And I love what you said uh, about taking like taking off the day, going mm -hmm. showering off, you know, the energy that was, you yeah. know, and it's it's like segmenting and moving into the next phase of your day you yeah. know, like renewed, re-energized, you mm -hmm. know, for me, it's just, I have three kids. <laughs> they're eight, they're 18, 20. Well, my son's going to be 21. My son's going to be 25 and they're still home and I'm still cooking. So you, you finish doing what you're doing and then you make dinner, you know, and you make sure everybody has what they want and what they need and the college is taken care of and, and mm -hmm. just make sure that everything is done. So what we need to do is, is exactly what you're saying. Reflect on, okay, what part of the day am I in? Mm -hmm. you know, and, and shower off, you know, like what, what was and, mm -hmm. and refresh and renew and, and get ready for the evening. Yeah. And, uh, Some people don't have anybody to get ready for the evening with. <laughs> and that is what I'm dealing with. You know, people that are going through divorces, breakups, and then they, they put the wall up. So if you've had a wall up for more than three months, then you need to look at what is blocking you from moving forward. A lot of people are just like, talk to the hand. I'm not doing that again. That was only one person or two people, right? And just because that person didn't end up being your appointed person, they weren't appointed for you. Like if it's not flowing, I always tell people, they call and they say, everything was flowing. And then all of a sudden something happened. It's because people rush into love. And I say, take your time, you know, mm -hmm. slow it down. I have an article like, did you drop your panties too soon? You know, and then think that that's going to turn into love. <laughs> it's about you really honoring what you want. And that takes me to, you know, part of this is to get real with yourself. Like get real are your patterns to be busy 
So busy people, and I, I'm guilty. This is my story. I was like a busy workaholic, pioneering this, running over here, speak. Men didn't, weren't interested. Pioneering in this. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I did. I pioneered yeah. rapid dating back in right. 2001 before the internet even started. Right. I was in cities all over the country, did media in every city. And men were like, can I have a date with you? And I'm like, well, two weeks from Friday, I'll be back in town. <laughs> Right. I wasn't really available, right. you know, and I had, and some people, this is another thing for many people, busy people, high executives, they have temporary, I call them temps in my book. You have a temp. They go, well, I have this man and he services me like once a week. And I'm like, really? Like, <laughs> okay. So that person takes up the small amount of time that you have to look for somebody that really wants love because a part of you, you have one part that wants it, then you got the other part that's like, maybe sort of, because you might not be healed, right, from your last thing. So then you take on somebody else that's half unavailable. And mm -hmm. what do you get? Half-ass love. Sorry, mm -hmm. didn't mean right. to curse on Valentine's Day. <laughs> right. But you spin, I call it a love loop. So if yeah. you have a pattern of rushing, and then you loop because the person isn't really available, it isn't only them. It oftentimes is you kind of guarding your heart. So that's what my book is about, looking at why you're guarding your heart. So what would you say are the three biggest mistakes that singles make? I love this question. It's one of your questions that I love to, I want to hear you answer this. What are the three biggest mistakes that singles, whether you're divorced, still single, never been married, you know, whatever it is, what are they? And then what can people do about it? I think the biggest mistakes um, for women is that uh, for women and men are women are a little different. M women have a, such an idealistic, romantic photo or picture of what love is. And they're so picky that they rule out some amazing people. They, they, they'll say, this guy is really cool, but he's losing his hair. And I'm right. like, okay. Um, you know, is that, uh, what about his soul? What about you know, like looking deeper into not just the pictures you're swiping through, right? right? And that's number one, being too extremely picky, men and women. Yeah. Uh, number two is not looking. And this is one of the things is my specialty, how you're marketing and branding yourself across all these networks. Because guess what? As soon as somebody knows your name, just like, you know, you'll look up Aaron, right? Or me or whatever. You see me on LinkedIn, Facebook, blah, 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 Instagram. And then you can see the lifestyle of this woman. Yeah. And then you see her on there. Men are, men are jerks. You know, I can't, I'm done with love. I mean, I see this. So I, know. I do an evaluation with these people to right. say, how are you marketing and branding you for love? Right. Do you have the right algorithms in your profiles, algorithms and words? So they don't describe themselves too well. One of my clients was a high powered executive and it's her opening line was work hard, play hard. And I'm like, you sound like a guy like, <laughs> like, okay, baby, call me. I'm working hard now. I want you to play hard. We shifted her profile to I'm a busy executive with a lot of time because I'm at a higher level and I'm looking for a sacred partner that can deal with my, my career. And, yeah. but I have, I'm so much fun. I'm romantic. I love to cook. I want to spoil someone. So what are you offering? Not only what you want to receive, but what are you giving? That's what they don't put in there. I want a man that's this. I want a girl that's that. She's got to be this. And I go, but what are you offering as a partner? Because when you meet somebody, you're a partner. Yeah. But if, and then number two is, do you know yourself and is your heart really open? Right. So when I ask people these questions in, in the book, I don't know if you've read the questions to ask on dates, but you have to have the right questions because your value system, you're, you're meeting a, va a value. You want to right. meet somebody that has similar values. So you learn to ask without interrogating. That's number two. Right. Without it being an interview. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So where do you live and what kind right. of car do you drive? And your body language and the way you ask it. And the way you live. You know. <laughs> now, I, I mean, I ran rapid dating for like 50,000. I don't even know how many thousands of people. And I would watch the people going on their five minute date and you would see the body language. Right. And then they would ask interrogative questions, leaning forward. 
And so you need to ask great questions to see if it aligns with you. What are you, what is your passion? So if yeah. somebody asked Aaron that, she would say, well, I'm on a quest to spread more love on the planet. Now I answered it the same. Men were like, okay, bye. I'm not into all that. I want attention on me all the time. I'm not your girl. Right. Or tell me about your family. You know, my, you have a family, you have beautiful kids, right? Mm -hmm. I have a big Italian family. Not everybody liked my family. They hug, they kiss the guys that didn't like that. They just disappeared. So I said, come meet my family because you're either going to love them. So <laughs> what are your values? Find out what your top values are and gently ask questions to any man or woman. You know, people go, oh, I'm into fitness. Well, what does that mean? Hmm. You know, you might only work out once a week. My husband works out every other day for the last 45 years. I am not on his level fitness wise, but he didn't care. But if he wanted a super jock that's going to run and do, you know, you know, uh, you know, three mile runs and swim in the ocean, all that uh, Iron Man stuff, that's not me. Right. So know thyself. That's what the chapter know yourself so well that you can say the things that are your that are so wonderful about you. So what's wonderful about you? If you're listening, like, what would you say? Well, gosh, I really love to spoil my partner. I put that in mind. I'm hundred percent Italian and I like to spoil the people I love, but I also like to be spoiled and I love to cook and I love to entertain and I'm a people person. So if you're not a people person, don't sign up. What are you? What are you out there? That's a great question. And again, it actually, it forces people to reflect on like, who am I really? What am I really looking for? Right. And I'm all about getting crystal clear with your vision. You know, like I just, I don't, I always say it's like DoorDash. <laughs> you well, know, I'm going to show, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you something about vision, right? I visioned this man years ago. Uh -huh. And you just met my husband. Yes, I did. And he looks just okay. like him. He looks just like him. Just like him. But so when, you, when you, when you it put in awesome. your vision, this was years ago, it says easy commitment, faith, unconditional love. You're ready. So when you meet somebody, find out, are they really like, well, my wife just left two weeks ago. They're not ready. No. They're just not ready. You know, no. timing, it's the timing of it. It's the energy. It's the openness. And it's you knowing yourself so well that you sit back and you allow the universe to bring these things to you by being clear. Yes. Very clear. Yes. And I, I was just saying about the being clear, it's like DoorDash, you know, it's not that you're going to DoorDash a man, but the universe kind of looks at it that way where you don't, you wouldn't say to DoorDash, I want a meat, a starch and a vegetable. You know, they'd say, well, you know, what kind of meat? And you wouldn't say, I just want a steak, you know, a, a potato and a, you'd say, I want a ribeye medium rare, right? Medium rare, like twice baked potato and sauteed broccoli, you know, right. salt, what are, you know, but crystal clear. Mm -hmm. And that's the way you want to be about your relationships. What do you want? Because if yeah. you're entering into it, just like, oh, I hope he's nice to me. You know, there's a lot, a lot that's just left on the side. And I would love, I would love for you to speak into Renee, the, um, the, the uh, partner versus the codependent. Because codependent yeah. is so unhealthy, but so many people get into relationships without even realizing it and becoming codependent on each other, which is so destructive and so unhealthy. You want a true partner. Can you speak into that? By taking your time and not having sex too soon. Okay. Uh, often the codependency or the psycho drama doesn't start until things get really intimate. And most people, uh, women always say, by the third date, the guy's expecting me to have sex with him. I mean, people are being pressured into feeling. And I'm like, listen, there's a difference between being intimate with somebody without going all the way. If right. there's a connection in the beginning and chemistry is what everybody wants. Everybody goes, I have to have the chemistry. Women say, I just have to have that. I said, great. But then test drive. Is the chemistry just a hot fling? Right. Or is it something that's going to grow over time where you get to know the soul before you you engage in, in merging your energy with somebody else because women get connected and we know about the oxytocin. You hear these doctors talk about it. But if you have sex without talking about it, I have a whole chapter in my book. Talk about sex first. 
Yeah. Because sometimes people will just, they think it's the third date. If I don't do it, he's not going to call me back. I said, then he's not your man or your right. woman, you know? Right. right. And so many men, um, I mean, I have man panels and the, all these really cool um, forums, you know, live flirting classes and all these things. And the men say, I don't care if I have to wait as long as I feel that spark, you know, mm -hmm. and you can kiss and you can be sensitive, se sensual. Yeah. And then you do little, you do little, like meet their friends. Like I, I always say to guys, I want to meet your, I want to hear about your family. I want to meet some of your friends. I want to find out why you do what you do, because you, if you're a passionate person in your work and you have a deadbeat guy that works at Starbucks or you're, you know, he's not into a vision for his life, even if he lost his job or whatever, because people lost their jobs during COVID. Sure, sure. COVID made everybody take a look at every area of love, not just romantic love. Family stuff came up. I mean, my sisters and I talked all about, and I'm really big into like, how did you, when I grew up completely different. No, none of my brothers and sisters, until they read my book, knew what I saw. And it wasn't always good. I saw infidelity mm -hmm. weaved in from my grandmother's generation to my great aunts, to my mother's sisters. There was a lot of cheating mm -hmm. and it made me have a guard. Mm -hmm. And that's the other big thing. If your heart is guarded, then a man that's really available or a woman that's really available will feel it. And unless they're a codependent that wants to try and change you, which sometimes doesn't work, you're going to, you're going to spin into a loop of trying to change someone. So you kind of have to feel that out. But if you're already sleeping with somebody, you'll put the blinders on and you won't see what's going on for a while. Yeah. And women do not feel pressured into sleeping with a man. You know, if, I mean, after the third, there is no, there's no, I, I mean, and correct me if I'm wrong, cause you're the, you're the pro in this area. <laughs> I'm, I'm not the pro, but there's no right or wrong. Whenever you feel ready as yeah. long as there's no pressure, you know, I'm not the girl that's going to, that's going to hop into the sack with somebody right away. That's just not me. You know, I want to get to know somebody and, yeah. and get to know what makes them light up, you know, and, and really get to know somebody first. But I mean, somebody else might feel that, you know, on the first date or the second date, but it's, it's not about pressure, you know, no. it's, and, and who knows, you know, who knows what I'll be when, whenever things happen, but it's not, it's never about pressure. It's about what do you want? It's about right. aligning your vision. Like right. my husband was in the middle of a divorce. I didn't have anything to do with it. He lived 3000 miles away. Right. And when we met, we met 20 years before at a wedding. Cause I was a wedding planner and I looked at him and I said, I'm going to marry him someday. And then 20 years later I ran into him, but he had a situation, right? You might be in a situation. So I said, What's your situation. And he goes, well, I'm in the middle of a divorce. And I said, and I'm traveling around the world for Oracle. And I said, well, how many women are you dating? And he said, three and a half. And I go, well, which half is it? The top <laughs> half? The so he was out, he was out fooling around and he said, I just want to be free. Yeah. I said, well, then, and then he goes, but I'd like to go out with you sometime. I said, I live in California and I was in Delaware and he goes, well, I come there all the time. And I said, well, I don't want to be one of your posse of women, okay. you know, so you should, we should just be friends. And, you know, so after a few, he came out a couple of times and I said, I like to take things slow and he did too. But after the third date, you know, we were, we had chemistry like that was fire, like, wow. Right. And I practiced what I preach. And I said, I'm not, I want exclusivity. And I don't know if you're, if I want to date somebody 3000 miles away. So let's, Give it a test drive. I call it a test drive and just hang out with the, just each other. So yeah. he got rid of the other women and they were all mad at him. He was getting these nasty texts because <laughs> he had told them he wanted to free him. So I still gave him the freedom. Yes. I said, but I'm going to give you a couple months. And if it's not working out, I'm going to dump you. Right. So I wasn't desperate. Don't be desperate. No. Know your power. Know your 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 goal, you know, and you don't have to push it on him. Like I want to get married and I have no. to have this and I need a man with this and that. Just let it flow by asking the right questions without interrogation in a feminine way. And men, when men read this, they're like, oh my God, I wish I had had this before because you have imprints from your family, your last boyfriend, girlfriend. And if you're not healed, that's what I like to do is look at the patterns and I had them, unavailable men coming at me because I grew up that way. Mm. Ants marrying men quick. 
Because back in the 50s and 60s, as when I was a little kid in the 60s, they would be in my kitchen. He left me for a woman. I got to go find somebody. So it made me think that if I wasn't didn't have my own money, they used to say, you better get your own money because men will leave you and you're going to be all alone. That's not good. Oh. What are your imprints? Uh -huh. My imprints weren't so good. Right. So I changed my life by healing me. And now I wrote a book raw about me so that you believe that I can help you because now that I have this love and I'm older now, you know, I want to teach like you teach wisdom to men and women, yeah. you know, because there are so many amazing, amazing people on this planet. But if you're too picky, you're, you're going to miss somebody that could just be right in front of you and you don't even know it. You know, yeah. I had a friend and then I want to get to your free gifts. I had a friend who she met a guy. He was a doctor. He was a great guy. She she said it was phenomenal. Such a nice guy. Such a gentleman. And but he wore cowboy boots. <laughs> that she, can be changed. She wouldn't, get out. she wouldn't go out with him again. I'm like, this was years ago. I'm like, could you please get past the cowboy boots? He's a nice guy. You know, he's a nice guy. Can you just get past the cowboy boots? She's Bye. the picky one that I'm talking about. Now, <laughs> my husband, Joe, had the tassel shoes with the little bows on them. And I said, honey, do you think that maybe I could like get you a pair of cool boots before we go out tonight? You know, and, and then I started virtually that, you know, <laughs> gradually getting him shirts. And then once he got the compliments, he never turned back, you know? <laughs> And uh, it that is the most, that's what I'm talking about, picky. Right. How boy boots all, can be overcome. We could all cool. use some help, you know, like from our partners. If our partner likes something else or whatever, like it, just say it, you know. And but be it's open all to in it. the delivery. And, yeah. and that is one of my special gifts is how to tell people really difficult things. And my sisters go, oh, God, she's going to use her technique, you know. <laughs> I have a certain technique. I can't give you all my secrets. But I do have a technique on telling people things that are uncomfortable. Like, Bob, you're such a handsome guy. But, you know, the hair tufts that are coming out of your shirt, that your shirts are a little too tight. So I can guarantee you if I get you a couple of shirts, you're going to get dating results that are going to, like, make a difference. So it's about giving that loving yeah. Um, support. And right. if you have friends that are going through divorce or a breakup and they keep doing the same thing over and over, buy them my book for Valentine's Day, yes. for God's sake. Get yes. real. Yes. It's called Get Real About Love, The Secrets to Opening Your Heart to Find True Love. Because if you have half of a heart open and the other half is like, I want love. And then the other... So it's unintegrated. You're not integrating. So your part, one part's going this way, one part's going that way, and you're never going to get the goal because you fight with yourself. So that is what I help people to do. And it is extraordinary. Uh, I had to do it to myself. Little Renee was scared to love and big Renee wanted love. And I'm like, you're blocking me from love. And she's like, I don't want it. I'm scared. <laughs> so I was like going back and forth between myself. This was years ago. And then I thought, well, why not go in one directions and stick to it instead yeah. of going, well, I'm going to go get my lover and maybe get a temp to make yeah. me feel better. And that's normally what people do. And then they spend five years with a guy, one of my friends, who's a very big uh, in the industry and a lot of celebrities, they stay with the wrong person. I work with a lot of celebrities and a lot of high powered people. And they're like, well, this is just my, you know, temporary girlfriend until I meet my wife. And I said, really? And I said, how long has that been going on? Four years. Now that girl thinks that she's getting engaged to wow. Bob. Oh, so the she doesn't even know she's the temp. No, she doesn't. Oh, wow. So if you've been with somebody for a certain amount of time, you need to call me and I'll give you the script. Yeah, really? Yeah. Really? So I, you know, I'm here because deeper love is my goal for everyone, you know, and I meet people, you know, the friend that we met each other through Natalie and Natalie, Susan, different friends. Yeah. We're all Wonder Women and you're all, all, a lot of us are powerful people doing powerful things. But without yeah. love, what is it all for? Yeah. You know, the love of your children, the love of your family. And some of us even never realized how families during COVID you weren't even connected with, you know. So Valentine's Day, you know, I already got my cards way ahead of time. And I send, I'm one of those card people that sends cards. You it. should be, you know, visioning, writing cards, planning a day, you know, go buy yourself something if you're alone. You know, go help volunteer for the homeless if you want to give back. You don't have to be alone today. You could be doing something 
And then, uh, you know, uh, uh, and you need, if you've been complaining about love to your friends, they're not going to, they're not going to want to introduce you to anybody because you're still hurt over the guy or you're sleeping with somebody and, and you tell them, I really am ready for love. And they're going to go, well, I'm not inviting in, in introducing you to my husband's best friend, John, because you're sleeping with that idiot. I'm not yeah. going to do it. So you have to look at how your values and goals are really aligned. And if your vision is ready. So I have vision classes every month. I have flirting classes every month. I have one, all these classes come up every month. They're all coming up this week, you know? So I'm here to help anybody. If you're on, alone on Valentine's Day, you don't need to be next year or even in a month from now. I can help you find love and see what might be blocking you. You know, what might be blocking you. And I also want to get into your free gifts. My or free gifts. Gift. Before we get into the free gift, I also want people to know that if you are alone and you're really good with you, it's okay. Buy yourself flowers. You know, like but buy yourself candy. Like it's oh, it's okay to be alone. And right, don't you don't you agree? I you was know? alone some years, but most years I got men and women that were single together. We all brought a gift and we all spoke about even if you get a couple people come over and you speak about the love to come. You're not talking about that yeah. you don't have it. Your vision. Yeah. And then we yeah. used to give each, everybody got a gift and we felt so loved. We were never alone. And people were like, I want to have a love club party. I thought <laughs> I the love club. I, and, and I still have those even now. You know, I have helped all of my single, almost all of my single Wonder Women get married. A lot of them. I love it. I was the first. I think they all had fears of being controlled by their husbands and they didn't want that. And that is not true if you pick the right person. Right. So all of you that are on a quest, you have to carve out in your in your calendar time for looking for love and getting yourself ready for love. Because that's really what it's about. And people go, oh, I'm not ready. So when people come to my classes, my live classes, I used to say to the women, I, I'm going to look and see how ready you are. And they go, well, what are you going to do? I said, I want to see your underwear underneath what you're wearing tonight. And they're like, <laughs> why? And I said, because that's sort of a meter about how open you are for love. How ready? You how see ready the you granny panties and you see the <laughs> leopard ones. And so I'm a little out of the box because I want it to be fun. If you're going to look for love, make it fun. Make it an adventure. This isn't a drag. You know, it's like it's. It's you learning and getting real with your heart. So yeah. today, what I would suggest, order a heart and be kind and loving to your own heart because the way you treat your heart is the way that you will be treated in this year. And I can guarantee you, if you vision and you speak it into your future, like when people say, how are you doing this Valentine's Day? You say, I'm committing that this year is my year. I'm going to find my beloved partner. I can't wait. Instead of God, I'm a single again. It's such a bummer. Change your conversation. Change the story. Yeah. Change the yeah. story. Yeah. Change the story and everything will change because people will only remember the last thing you told them. The last thing you told them about Ooh. your, and then they go, well, Renee's meeting this, you know, back in the day, they'd go, uh oh, she's still seeing Mario. I can't believe it. And I hit it. You know, this guy, if you read my book, you'll, you'll know who Mario is. Poor Mario. Um, I, he was, a, he was a, a guy that I dated that was dating me and someone else. And then, okay. he, and then I found out later that, you know, he had both of us at the same time. Not a good idea. And then he got married and, and he didn't, and I said to him after I found out that he had lied for three years yeah. that I was going to put him in my book. So I just <laughs> called him. I just called him. So if you have somebody oh, that's blocking your heart from your past that yeah. pisses you off or hurt you, you need to heal all that yeah. stuff and move on. And let it go. Let I, it go. I did it with my ex and it's so freeing. You yeah. can just roam about the planet fully as you, fully yourself. Woo! <laughs> so free. It's so free. So heal your heart, open your heart, and then vision. And if you want to take a fun vision class, it's 20 bucks. I will rock your world and make you have a great vision because most people slap all sorts of pictures on one thing. You got to be organized about your vision. Like you doing this, you created the vision, you got the show. If you have too many things and you know, putting your weight loss on there and then your dog and your houses. Make it just about love today. So that could be another thing that you could start your vision board. And then if you, you know, want to come and take my class. I did it after Valentine's Day on purpose so that people would create their vision board this year with a new way of thinking. Change your thinking. 
pray. You know, I used to come into my apartment and go, hi, honey, I'm home. And my neighbor go, did you meet somebody? I said, no, I'm just pretending like <laughs> there. Yeah. Then yeah. I got my house ready and my clothes. Right. And I, you know, you got to be ready for a date. Yeah. So I'm asking right. you this. If you knew that the love of your life, this would be my final thing, was coming in 30 days, what would you be doing to prepare for him or her? And then if you want to set up my free little gift, you know, you, I'm going to send you my flirting with life book. Uh, and then I'm going to send it offer the first people that contact me. You'll, you'll, if you get that gift, you'll get a lot of free gifts. So you can just go to my gift and set up a consultation with me. And I could, I could give you some, some really great tips for you individually, because it's, it's the year of love. We're all going to go deeper. And thank you, you for allowing me to share this. I have. I loved it. And it went so fast. It went, <laughs> and there's so much more. You know, you're amazing. You're absolutely amazing. And everybody has got to look you up. They have got to get in touch with you. They've got to definitely get the, the special gifts, the free gifts and flirting. And there's just so much that you cover. Flirting class is so important. If you don't know how to connect, it's for business too. Business, love, friendship. And I am definitely, I've been teaching this class for, gosh, 30 years. And uh, other companies hire me to teach it because students don't even know. Like I spoke at UCLA for the teenagers. They don't know how to connect. Yeah. They're on the phones. I so contact. your kids are watching you. <laughs> they're, and, they're, they're watching. So watch <laughs> what you say to your kids about love because yeah. you're going to imprint them. Like I got imprinted that it wasn't good if you're a divorced mom or dad. That's the other thing. Give the hope for your kids. Like, you know what? It wasn't right with daddy and mommy, but we had fun. We had, we were blessed with you. And I'm going to find somebody wonderful again, too. Instead of all the men are jerks, I'm not going to. Wow, that's such a, not a healthy dialogue. Not no. a healthy thing. Yeah. So be that I love. Boys. I have my boys. Are, they're going to be 21 and 25. I would never want anybody to have that. And my daughter's 18. You know, well, I want you. To you're like a that. vibrant light bringing ah! the Love the planet. They could only turn they out. They want people to respect men and women, you know, boys and girls. And, you know, it's equally and just, you know, love each other. There's no there's no time or space for the whole he man, woman, or what is it? He man, woman, haters club or whatever it is, or from like, like the Flintstones or just, you know, you get you get hurt. You, you deal with it. You, like you said, you said it beautifully. You deal with it. You heal and you move on. Onward and upward, baby. Onward and upward. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And happy Valentine's Day. Uh, I know we're, we're planning a really, I, I always make um, really delicious fish. I, I love sea bass. So I'm making sea bass. Ooh. I have little hearts around these little hearts that I buy at the Dollar Tree are going to be everywhere. And it's just a fun evening. And we don't really like going out that much, you know, unless it's, it, we're, we sometimes go with friends that have sacred love. I call it sacred love. So if you're looking for sacred love, I'd love to help you. Aww, and beautiful. I just wish you all a happy Valentine's and be, be, be gentle with your beautiful heart and love will find you when you least expect it. Yes. And we're going to leave it with that. That was perfect. That was perfect. Thank you so much, Renee. Thank you. Renee Piani. She's absolutely amazing. The love designer right here. You're just, you're brilliant. You're so kind. You're so you're just, you, you've done so much for this world in this space, you know, with regard to love, which is the most powerful thing, you know, that we have to offer and that we have to receive, you well, know, it's, you. So I, I really, um, you know, we, my husband and I talk about what lineage, what are you going to leave behind? And you and I are both aligned that we're going to leave the planet with more love. And that has always been my goal since I moved here over 33 years ago. And I just was blessed to study with Reverend Michael Beckwith at Agape and, some really amazing teachers and, and, you know, it's just, it's what is in our hearts. You know, we're, we're like sisters of the same, you know, I don't know, at spirit, spiritually we get led to the people yeah. that can help us do what we do best. And, and, and people always say, well, that's the love girl, you know, and it's, it's so interesting because I'm speaking my tree. I'm going to say this right on this world thing. I'm speaking that this book becomes a movie because you are in control of your destiny yeah. and your wiring from your lineage has made you who you are. And you have the chance to change that 
by getting real about love. So I hope that you'll get my gift offer and that you'll pick this up because I think it'll make you get that look at yourself that most people never get a chance. It's like having a book that a therapist would take you through like two years of like finding out about you. Right. It's like all encompassed. Right there. Right there. And it's so I hope you enjoy it, Aaron. I did out of the universe, but it's yeah. become a movie. And so it is. <laughs> Well, and so it is. And so it is. I met a producer on Sunday when I was out. There you go. Just, just like that. There's so be time. that magnetic force and everything will come to you in the perfect time. So God bless you. Happy Valentine's. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's. All right, everybody. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal interview here with Renee. And you can find this interview on Apple, Apple TV, on Roku, on Amazon, and then also the podcast like Spotify, all the, all the big names. And uh, you could also go to lifeontrack.tv. You'll see it there as well. I just, it's such a blessing. So just, you're such a blessing. This show is such a blessing for all of you watching and listening. You're a blessing, you know, and I just want to, sh- I just wanted to spread, you know, like a spray, <laughs> spread the love, spread the blessing and uh, tell your family and friends about it. And like I said, you can go to lifeontrack.tv and see this there again as well. All right, everybody, stay tuned every Monday, each Monday, as my guests and I bring you more insight on how you can get your life on track personally and professionally. So have a magnificent day, everyone. And always remember to live on. We're numbered. Love you.